everyone okay so um today's video is actually going to be a little different for me um this was a requested video um someone had asked me to do a video on um, hair care and what i've done to help my hair grow um for those of you who do not know me um this the length of my hair right now this is actually pretty short for me my hair used to be so much longer my hair was so long that it actually went past my butt and stopped like right in the back of my thighs um i used to sit on it it used to get caught in car doors um when my daughter was born and she was small i would play with her if my hair was loose she would get caught in my hair um it got to the point that it was just hard to really take care of it and be with the baby all the time too so it was just a lot easier for me to cut my hair and i also wanted to change I had had my hair long for more years than I can remember, and um, I'm gonna um, I'm gonna place a video uh, a, a video. I'm sorry, I'm gonna place a picture somewhere in this video to show you how long it was. Unfortunately, knowing preparing to make this video, um, I went looking for pictures of my hair, and I only found this one picture that I took from the back of my hair on the day that I was going to get it cut. I wanted one last reminder of what it looked like and how long it was and I have no clue why after all these years after all the years that I had it long why that was the only picture that I had like that and unfortunately it's really low quality too I have no idea why but it was a low quality picture so it's not the clearest picture in the world so I'm sorry for that but I just wanted you guys to see like what I came from and what my hair you know looks like now I, I never really did anything major, um, it's just basic hair care and everything else. One thing that you guys have to keep in mind is that everyone's hair is different. So your routine will vary depending on the type of hair that you have. So if it's curly, if it's straight, if it's thick, if it's thin, um, even the type of climate that you live in. If you live somewhere where it's warm or hot 90% of the time or all the time and um, it makes you sweat a lot more, so therefore you'll wash your hair a lot more than someone who lives in colder climates where they don't really sweat a lot, so they can skip more days without washing their hair. Um, a lot of different things come into play. Um, also, uh, if you're someone who, if you can, there are people who just feel like they can't go a day without washing their hair because they feel like it's just dirty. And I've even had people say, oh, well, you know, um, I keep washing my hair constantly because it's always getting oily really fast. You have to remember that the more you're washing your hair, you're stripping your hair of its natural oils. So you're actually causing the hair follicles to react to all this constant washing by excessively producing all the natural oils in your hair. So you feel like, well, I'm someone whose hair um, gets really oily all the time anyway. You would find that if you gave yourself um, let's say maybe three to four days even if your hair got oily it might be a little gross but give yourself three to four days don't wash your hair and then finally go ahead and wash your hair just once don't overreact and start washing it every day back to back to back just wash your hair once then wait two days and then wash your hair again you'll start to regulate the production of the natural oils in your hair um also, um, aside from just how you wash your hair, I wash mine depending on the type of um, hairstyling week I've had. If I have a week where I've um, straightened my hair or curled in it, it's just been loose the whole week, I can probably get away with washing my hair twice that week. And if there are other weeks where I tend to do more styles where I have it up, I've used gel or hairspray or mousse, um, any type of um, heavy styling products, then I'm probably washing my hair more times that week. But it's more because you don't want this buildup of product to just really make your hair disgusting. So you've got to take care of it. Um, deep mask repair treatments, um, again, depending on the type of hair that you have, I would suggest doing it once, maybe twice a week. Um, another big important factor on hair care is how you properly heat style your hair. Um, if you don't use heat protectants, you're really going to be damaging your hair no matter what you do. Like anytime you use heat styling, whether you have a heat protectant or not, you're going to be 
causing some type of drying damage to your hair. Using heat protectant minimizes that damage. Properly using your heat styling tools will also minimize the damage. When you're blow drying your hair, if you have the heat setting on medium heat instead of high heat, you reduce the amount of, not again, it's not gonna be monumental, but any every little bit helps. So if you use medium heat instead of high heat, you can reduce the amount of damage that you're gonna be doing. If you, um, when you're using your flat iron or curling iron, but mainly the flat iron, play with the temperatures first. Don't automatically buy your flat iron and just jump straight into putting it on the highest heat setting and then just using that forever. Play with the different temperature settings and figure out what works for your hair, your hair type, because let's you know let's say for instance your flat iron goes up to 400 degrees and you decide that you're going to automatically set it but your hair would have gotten styled perfectly at 200 degrees you're doing so much more damage to your hair because you didn't take the time to really figure out what setting would have worked best for you also when you're using your heat styling products um and this again pertains more to the flat iron um, don't hold it in like this vice-like grip so that you're practically tugging the flat iron through your hair. Again, the flat iron is supposed to smooth you and if I didn't have a snag, that would have looked awesome. <laughs> the flat iron is supposed to smooth your hair straight. It's not supposed to crush your hair straight. So when you have that really tight grip and you have to practically yank it through, you're definitely holding too hard and you're crushing your hair. If you hold it just gentle enough so that the hot plates can touch the hair but it still glides right on through, that's when you're just smoothing the hair into place. And that's what you want, especially um, when you're using a flat iron to curl your hair. Again, um, I do believe I mentioned this in my uh, how to curl your hair video. You know, you wrap it around the iron, you hold the iron just enough so that you can glide the curl through, but you don't want to hold it in this vice-like grip so you have to yank it through the hair. Not only will you be crushing the hair, but you're also going to be snagging it and tugging out hair and basically ripping it out of your scalp. And um, another good thing is... Um, don't be afraid to invest in a better quality flat iron or curling iron. Um, I used to think that, you know, flat iron was a flat iron. It really didn't matter. That's actually not true. I, um, the first few years of me um, using flat irons to style my hair, I used to just buy drugstore ones. And I always got that burned hair smell. And my hair was always dry and brittle looking. And I ended up using more products in my hair afterwards to smooth it out and make it look sleek and make it look shiny. And I thought, you know what, that's just, it doesn't matter what flat iron I get, this is just going to be the end result. And I went through several drugstore flat irons trying to find one that didn't do that. And um, I also tried the, um, uh, what is it called, the wet to straight flat iron. And that was probably one of the worst moves I could have done. Um, it sounds like an awesome idea Like you don't have to either let your hair air dry or you don't have to go through the step of blow drying your hair before flat ironing it. Here's the problem though. Your hair is literally being fried dry and you see the steam rising out of it and everything and you think, oh, well, it's just steam. It can't be harming my hair. No, it actually is doing more damage than just dry flat ironing your hair. So if you have one of those, I would recommend switching it out for a higher end flat iron and really making the investment because again, if you're really worried about your hair and if you're watching this video, then you probably do care about your hair. So it's definitely worth spending more money. When I finally um, invested in my KQC flat iron, that was the best move I could have made. Uh, I noticed the difference immediately. My hair did not smell burned or fried in any way, shape, or form. Like it just, whatever products I used in the shower is what my hair still smelled like when I was done. It was so nice. It made my hair smooth. It made my hair shiny. And uh, you know, again, there's no burned hair smell. Um, it's, um, it's just, it's really worth it. And it makes you see what the difference is and you know, um, for some things, it's true when they say you get what you pay for. Um, there are some things you can skimp out on and I would definitely say um, 
heat styling tools for your hair is something you should not skimp out on like if you also the type of brushes that you use whenever you um take uh tangles out of your hair i would definitely recommend using a paddle brush um wide tooth combs are more for dealing with wet hair if and when you ever have to um comb out your hair when it's wet but paddle brushes i definitely recommend they are a lot easier um on your hair when trying to get out any um tangles or knots or snags um it doesn't take a lot of you know yanking and pulling or you know just extra stress um, they actually work pretty smooth. I use them on myself. I also use them on my daughter and um, it makes brushing out her hair a lot easier. She has this really bad habit of always twisting her hair and curling it around and actually creating these knots that just somehow stick in her hair. She's gotten her fingers stuck in there. <laughs> and I've actually used them to help brush out her hair with the least amount of damage, the least amount of pain. And if they work on a three-year-old little girl, and again, I speak for myself, they work, you know, for me too, then um, I definitely would recommend them to anybody who's not already using them. Um, and um, also when you're sleeping, um, I know a lot of people do not like to sleep with their hair tied up in any way, shape, or form. Um, if you don't mind it, try it out for maybe, you know, a few nights or a week or so either wrap your hair in a scarf or just put a loose bun on the top of your head as you sleep you toss and turn and your hair gets all matted up and um, tangled up by the pillows and the blankets and everything else and you wake up and the first thing you have well not the first thing but you know before you either take a shower or whatever when you go to do your hair you have to now brush out all these knots if you have if you brush out your hair before going to bed and you either wrap it in a scarf or you have the loose bun when you remove the scarf and or bun in the morning or right before you go to do your hair you just run a brush through it and you'll see how much softer it is the less times you have to brush knots out of your hair the less times you get caught up with tangles or anything is another good thing for you because again less stress because you're the less stressed on your hair because it's the less amount of times <laughs> it's the less uh, it's what am I trying to say it saves you from having to repeatedly go in and brush out tangles and put your hair through more stress there you go and um so that's definitely not only a time saver but you know a mess saver with the hair and um I'm pretty sure that's about it. Um, try to keep your hair trimmed. Um, you don't have to go to, the, I also have a video on that. You don't have to go to the salon all the time. You don't have to spend ridiculous amounts of money to keep your hair maintained and trimmed. Only if you want a drastic change and um, a really special haircut that you can't do at home, then I would definitely suggest going to the salon and paying the money to have it done by a professional. Um, I don't want anyone to come back later on and say, well, you told me to do it at home and, you know, now I look like Mr. T. So, <laughs> it was random. Um, but yeah, just um, uh, keep your hair trimmed. You can do it at home. Save yourself money. And um, again, just really importantly, learn your hair type. Learn what works for you. If one product doesn't work, if something that someone suggests, I suggest, anyone doesn't work for you, then continue trying different products and find what works for you your hair type is unique to you there's an endless amount of ways that you can care for your hair and it all depends on um, what you're willing to do what you want to do and again just I can't stress this enough finding what works for you no one can really give you that miracle answer um, only you can find that for yourself so I hope this video was helpful. I hope any of the tips I gave you were helpful. Um, if there's any questions that you have, then please comment below. If um, if there's anything um, that you else that you would like me to do a video on, then please leave a, quest, a request for that below. And if any of the tips and tricks that I gave you in this video actually happens to help you, then please leave a video response letting me know because I would love to see and hear from you. Thanks for watching. Bye.